Today we're going to talk about cell structure 2. We'll talk about some cells, the pancreatic astronaut cell in the pancreas, and the hepatocyte in the liver. We'll also talk about some organelles, the mitochondria, Golgi apparatus, and ribosomes. And then we'll conclude with artifacts. These are man-made defect structures or features that should not be there. Uh, if we look at the pancreatic astronaut cell here with, uh, from our atlas, we can see that there's a host of pink and blue cells throughout, and that each one of these make a little uh, grape-like structure in through here. Grape-like structure, here's another one here. This is actually an asnus, hence their asner cell is the name of it. These latter regions here are the Alex longer hand uh, that has to do with the inner compartment. But if you look right here at these cells, you can see it has a kind of bluish tint at the base, and then the zymogen granules, the proteinaceous component, is at the apex of the cell. In this slide, we can see that this would be one of the asini composed of several pyramid-shaped cells. Here's its nucleus. You can see the dark uh, heterochromatin or the light euchromatin. Sometimes you can see nucleoli. Uh, in these cells. But just as we saw before, a grape that we have here, this is kind of like a grape shaped structure, with the blue tint of a cytoplasm at the base and the more red proteinaceous component of the cell is toward the lumen of the cell. If we look at it with tellurium blue, again, we can see uh, an asinus, and in this case, we can see the little lumen inside there. We can't see uh, the difference in, in the staining here. It just looks clear with a lot of membranes associated with it. Uh, and here we see the zymogen granules are very dense as they are approaching the lumen. So when compared to our atlas, a grape light structure, pyramid shaped um, uh, with nuclei, large nuclei around, some of them have a nucleolus. So if we look at uh, these again, the uh, H&E drawing, as well as the H&E slide, hematoxylin eosin, uh, or the tellurium blue, and we compared that to the pancreatic astronaut cell uh, that we see. Here's an asnus here. This is one cell, a pyramid shape. That's another cell in through there, another cell over through there. And here's the lumen with junctions between adjacent epithelial cells to create uh, this lumen that's there. But what we see is the blue tint that we enter there at the ultrastructure level. You see there's lots of ribosomes associated with the rough and the plastic reticulum. And it's the rough ER that's producing the proteins that ultimately goes through the Golgi apparatus up through here uh, uh, to be glycosylated. And then after they leave the Golgi apparatus, they are in the post cistrum uh, component of that as they are disordered out and become more concentrated ultimately to be delivered to their path. So this blue tint that we see here and we see at around here is ribosomes of the rough and the plasma reticulum. Uh, the red part that we see uh, in through here and here and the granules there are indeed uh, the zymogen granules that ultimately will be secreted. And remember, the pancreatic astral cell is a cell that Plotty used to follow the temporal appearance of radioactivity through the cell as he followed it from the rough ER, through the Golgi apparatus, and then to secretory granules and ultimately to the outside. Another cell type we want to talk about is the uh, hepatocyte, uh, which is one of the liver cells. And so the hepatocytes are located in a row but they're actually located in a lobule. Here's a lobule here with the blood supply in through there and uh, ultimately the blood will move through here to the central vein and ultimately it removed out. But if you see a higher mag of one of these little strips in here, uh, we can see is a host of cells that are bathed uh, with uh, blood cells on either side. Here we see uh, 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 one of those cells, a, a drawing of it showing you uh, the sinus in through here. This is a, a, a sinusoid located in through there. 
uh, and we have endothelial cells that run through there. You have Kupfer cells in through there, and this is a parasite located right there, which is fl uh, the fluid from the blood actually bathes the hepatocyte. Um, if you look at the slide, we can see these uh, individual hepatocytes. You can see the nucleus, the uh, heterochromatin, the lighter staining, euchromatin, and you can see distinct nucleoli uh, on these cells. So this will be the sinusoid running through there and then these hepatocytes that are bathed by it. If you go to one of the regions outside the lobule, you'll see what they call a triad. Here's a bile duct, an artery, and a vein going in through there. This would be a branch of the hepatic vein coming from the intestine. Again, we can see there the, the bile duct, artery, and a little bit of the hepatic portal vein coming from it. In contrast, the, the center of the lobule would have a central vein, and that's what we see here, is the, the central vein in the center of a lobule. If we uh, stain the cells with, chlor with chloral carbon, uh, actually uh, the cells are phagocytic, that is lining these sinuses and the sinuses you can see there or or sinusoidals if you want to call them uh we see there have actually have red blood cells inside them but on the side you can see where these kupfer cells and the kupfer cells are phagocytic cells like macrophage cells and they are involved in helping clean the blood uh, as well here we see a macrophage uh with uh, various uh, uh, stages of digestion. One characteristic of secondary lysosomes is that the granules uh, have different intensities of them as their different states of degradation. Nucleus, a lot of uh, uh, plasma membrane projections to, uh, associated with phagocytosis. Again, back to the hepatocyte, we see these cells located in through here. This is a, a drawing of electron micrograph, and we can see that there are actually two uh, uh, sets of contact with the lumen. One is in the blood and one is in the bile. And here we can see what we call bile canaliculus. So the hepatocyte is producing bile and is going through the bile canaliculus ultimately to go to the bile duct. Also in the hepatocyte we see lots of glycogen. Glycogen forms little rosettes and their glycogen particles are a little larger than the rough in their plasma reticulum. If you compare these granules with, with the ribosomes on this rough ER, you see that the ribosomes are smaller than those. We can also see tuber type Christi that are located uh, in the mitochondria. A host of mitochondria, a lot of rough in the plasma reticulum that we see. Usually there's also a fair amount of smooth ER, even though I don't, indicate, I don't see it right there. There's also a lot of lipid uh, in these, uh, in these uh, cells. Here we can see a liver again, uh, this is a nucleus with a heterochromatin, euchromatin. We can see nuclear pores uh, running through there, a host of nuclear pores uh, in through there. Uh, and we see autophagic vacuole. This is uh, self-digesting mitochondria and some glycogen within the cell. So auto self-digestion is what this vacuole, anytime you have a series of more membranes than you should have, it's going to be an autophagic vacuole. Here's a Golgi apparatus in through there, another autophagic vacuole, mitochondria, mitochondria, ref in the plasma reticulum, and glycogen rosettes. And glycogen is very important in the hepatocyte. You can see there's lots of glycogen stored in through there, and in fact, over the period of time during the day, if you don't eat, it will deplete the glycogen stored in there. Glycogen is broken down to sugars to maintain your sugar concentration. Here's another cell that shows you a nice Golgi apparatus rough in the plasma reticulum in through there, another nice Golgi apparatus, and some uh, lipofusin granules, which is a final product of uh, a lysosomal uh, degradation. Again, we can see the nucleus, the heterochromatin, uh, is this dark chromatin in through, and a lighter chromatin, or euchromatic chromatin, is a lighter staining chromatin. Uh, here again, we can see uh, other cell. This is a swirl of endoplasmic reticulum that's in the, um, the, the, pro the uh, ductus deferens. I'm not sure why it's in there, but it is. But it has a host of, of, of Golgi apparatus. One, two, three, four, five. 
uh, a lot of Golgi apparatuses that can be seen uh, in these cells. Not, not sure why they're there, but they are. Also, if we look at the intestinal absorptive cell, uh, here we can see what's in the blue. You can see the terminal bars very nicely. Here you see mitochondria, clusters of mitochondria scattered throughout the cell, which correspond to these at the ultrastructural uh, level. This is, uh, so these are intestinal absorptive cells whose function is absorption. These cells in here are the gobbit cells also uh, in the intestine. We see a little piece of nucleus in through there. We also see coated vesicles and we see budding in the plasma reticulum coming off, uh, uh, the smoothie R is budding off of the rough in the plasma reticulum. A nice Golgi uh, out, out through there and these are membranes between the adjacent cell. This is one cell, another cell, another cell, another cell. So we see four, at least four cells in view. Nice Golgi apparatus and an autophagic vacuole that we can see. Now here's a, a, another uh, slide. This happened to be a cardiac muscle and it shows you the mitochondria in through here. Lots of muscle, uh, 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 lots of mitochondria located where it's needed for metabolism or uh, energy, energy I should say. Uh, and here we can see these are nuclei but there's a host of mitochondria that's located in these cells as well. Here's a piece of testis, you have a capsule and then these tubules and in between the tubules you have Leydig cells. This is a Leydig cell and through here it happened to be from a horse, lots of smooth in the plasma reticulum, lipofusing granules which are degradation uh, of lysosomal action, uh, autophagy, heterophagy that may be going on and also you may, may note that the uh, tubular cristae, they're little tubes, so the mitochondria look like the smooth they are kind of, except it's contained in a membrane, as opposed to a lamellar type that we saw in the pancreas. Here is a tuber type in characteristic of steroid secreting cells. Now, uh, one of the things that we're supposed to be mindful of is artifacts. Artifacts are man-made structures. And here you can see a grid. This is a grid uh, in the electron micrograph that should not be there. There's a hole that should not be there. So those are man-made things. Uh, when you put an image, uh, you put your tissue on uh, electron microscopic grid, there's always a possibility a grid bar gets in your way and that's what that is. Uh, here we can see knife marks. These are knife marks here associated with uh, man-made structures that should not be there. An additional knife marks and chatter that we see there. Also, sometimes it can fold or pieces could be ripped out. These are artifacts. I hate to tell you that because you tend to think everything's an artifact from now on, but uh, things that should not occur, like this is a fold over, over, we don't see any fold over there. We see it right here. You want to go to the areas that had fewer artifacts. These are other folds that are in the tissue itself. If you take a big piece of tissue, it's really hard to let it lay down, uh, to, to uh, lay, lie down flat. Here's other artifacts in these uh, uh, blood vessels that should not be there. Another one, a folding artifact where this is folded over, again, uh, that is artifact, it should not be there. Here we see some knife marks. Anytime in nature, things don't usually go in a straight line, okay? They're in a straight line like that, something's wrong. And also this might have been uh, ripped out and folded over as you see there. So what you wanna do is look in areas that don't have the artifacts for, for the best imaging to occur. And again, this is the grid bar that we talked about before the first time. And this is actually what the beam looks like. You wanna know what electrons look like? Uh, that's what they happen to uh, make the fluorescent screen white like that if there's no, no nothing in there to prevent electrons from coming through. Other artifacts, sometimes when things are on top of other structures, you're able to see some artifacts. Like here we see projections off of the plasma membrane of this macrophage, and then all of a sudden there's something sitting there. It shouldn't be there. It's an artifact. When something's there that should not be there, that's covering up something else, it's usually some kind of artifact. We can see some little coated vesicles in through there as the cell is indeed functioning.
And that's what we're going to talk about uh, today, artifacts and then a couple of cell types as well as organelles. Take care.